It's a unique hustle, big, big shit. Mm. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big Name shit. Like the studio, big, big shit, big, 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 big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing my dad walk on. Man, we in the building once again, man. We got a special guest today, man. He really don't need no introduction, man. Y'all know already, y'all done seen his clothing line, man. This guy here, man, he, hey, he come through today, man. Marcus Nash. Yes, sir. Man, man, what's up, man? What's You're a delight, up, man. man. Groomed dog, man. I, 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 I thought I was trimmed up. Keep it, keep it trimmed. That nigga ready for the camera, man. Yeah, you know? <laughs> gotta be ready. You feel me? Man, you look good, man. man. I appreciate it, man. You know Same what? Man. We kings, man. You know, when I went up to Chicago, they told me I was king. I knew it, though. I already knew it was at the you. W. They was like, man, where y'all came, ain't nobody came like that. King. Yeah, like, okay. Nigga, yeah, I'm king. Man, what's yeah, what's going on doing, with man. your Marcus? Nothing much, you chilling. Man, you know, um, you know, just want to say I commend you and congratulate you, man, because we need more brothers like you, man. Entrepreneurs, people who really, you know, uh, really sets a, a standard for our people, man, because a lot of times our people don't know how to shake back in life because of all the like dysfunctionalities, different things that they go through coming up as kids in families, broken homes. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, one mama. No mama, one daddy, no daddy. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's crazy. All right. So for you to make it through, man, it's crazy how, how you know, it's, just, it's it's not easy, bro. It's definitely not easy. Yeah, so my wife, you know, I, you know how Miss Jamaica do it. She going to break you down. She going to come at you a different way. I'm real, you know, we going to get into the clothes and all that. For but sure. I'm going to let her have a flow for a second. For sure, let's do it. So I like to go back in the background. So okay. I need to know... Um, were you raised in a single parent household of where course. you were? Oh, so of course, like is this a norm? <laughs> like of course, like that's not supposed to be the norm. That's something I embrace though. Really? I embrace it because I respect all young queens out here that's doing it, okay. uh, taking care of their family single in a single parent household. It's hard, but it takes a strong woman to do it. And my mom is definitely the definition of a strong woman. But why is it so that? You know, the first thing you say is your mom. Why can't be a single parent household and it's the dad who took the kids and raising them? I mean, on my end, my dad is a provider. So uh, as a parent, you should be able to spend time with your children and make mm -hmm. sure that the children is nurtured properly. So I feel like it's more so on the mother to make sure that the kids, are, their upbringing is right. The father is more so the provider. So he at work. So they have a lot of time to spend time with their kids. So. But I'm raising put, a boy, though, is boy, different correct. because the man needs to raise the boy so you know, he can know how to become a man. Absolutely. I agree. But in most cases, that's, that's not. It's not that's so. Not, it's not so. But are you changing the narrative? I mean, do you have any children? I have no children. Well, when you do get some, are you going to leave them with the mama? And you, yeah, that's <laughs> what you just said. He's not going to leave them at all. That's what you just said. You're going to leave them with the mama, let the mama feed them, and you going to leave. Where are you going? How many men actually plan to leave them? Well, you're right, because a lot of times the women drive them away. Mm. Let's just be real about it, man. Not all the, the time, women drive sometimes. them away a lot of time because, brother, you know, the world, especially black people. How about you said the women drive them away, but how about is the men don't know how to communicate to be able to keep the family together? Well, if, he, if she would so listen. So you look at it as she's nagging and she's this and she's that, so I'm just going to leave because I can't deal with her. But instead of sitting down and trying to communicate properly but, so we can make this thing work. Right. Yeah, I hear That's you. That's why I ain't got kids. Yeah, but <laughs> let, 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 let me just, don't take that. <laughs> You just took that abuse that you don't swallow? <laughs> no, the problem with that is most of the time we can't, you know, we really can't understand what you want. Right. Because you one way over here, next day you're over there, next time you're over here, next time you're over there. All over the place. And we just trying to figure out what the hell you're going to do next because we can't figure out what you want. All right. You just feel that way because y'all <laughs> men have selective hearing, so you hear what you want to hear, so you don't really sit down and hear the full picture. Let's get into you because this is just this is gonna take it to a whole nother level. No, no, I'm gonna so, be I'm gonna be real with you. Um, you know, this is a man's world, but it wouldn't be what, nothing. What do you say? Without a woman's touch. This is a man's touch. world. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He listens would, to too much but music. You know what I'm but it wouldn't be nothing without right. a woman's touch. A woman or a girl. Say James Brown. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's it, we need each other at the end of the day. If we can make we it, if we can make our family stay together, that's the that's really the end game, right? right. To where we can build and and create uh, generational wealth, pulling our families together, right. and also you know bridging those gaps, breaking those different curses where we have these single parent homes. Even though we had to deal with it because of us being stripped from house to house early on, 
uh, because of the way that our people was, was brought and nurtured uh, through our different ways we went through in history. All I'm saying is we have to now start to try to build and try to put those things back together. And I think we can right. do it. We can. Yeah. So um, wh where were you raised? Like Dallas. Dallas? Oh, part yeah, of Oklahoma. Dallas. Oh, really? Ooh, okay. Ooh, ooh, okay. Ooh, that boy from I, I, went, I went to Bertie Alexander. <laughs> okay, okay. So how many siblings do you have? I have nine siblings. Yeah. That boy got nine siblings. By your mom or by no, your dad? It's, it's both sides split up. Both sides. Well, on my mom's side, I'm the youngest. I got two older sisters on my dad's side. I'm the youngest. Oh, see, your daddy is a bad one. That got all Wait them. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say all yeah, that. Because I mean, the mama only has three. The other six only? came from. Only? The other six came from the, the dad. Yeah, well. And that's nine total. Well, you know, really in the Bible days, you and know, how many moms have, you know. for the dad? <laughs> see, look at that look. See that look we right there? We all got different moms. Yeah, but at the know. end of the day, you know, that's the way it was with Jacob. What is that? And, Papa and that was a rolling Well, stone? that's the way it was with Jacob. And uh, when he had his 12 sons, he had mm -hmm. uh, he had a, a <laughs> one wife named uh, uh, Rachel, wasn't it? And that's Leo. only two. And then he had another wife, uh, one of two maidens, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, that, that had kids for him. So this is something that they did during those times. But some kind of way, the, the jurisdictions of today have taken it to a place where we have to be really ball and chain. To one woman, but this is not the way it was. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> but is there is there something wrong to be ball and chain to one woman? Not, not when it's you, sweetheart. I oh, love okay. it, baby. No, 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 no. No, he's no. right though. He's right though. He's right though. You find the right? woman, you gotta. You know, yeah, yeah. We, right. the, the times change, and I'm able to deal with it. Cause I'm I used to think like that though. I used to think like I used to want to have like multiple women. Like I just want to see what my kids are like in different races, you know. But now that I'm more mature, I understand that behind every strong man is a strong woman. So. You should, you should bury that. You Where did that, that thought process come from when you were a kid? Man, it was like, growing up, that's what you've seen. People have multiple baby mamas. But if that's all you've seen, that's all you know. Mm -hmm. But as I got more exposure and, like, started seeing how real families operate, like, with marriage and having a family and how that affects the kid growing up, that's what I want to do. I want to get married and have a kid. So it's dysfunction in the family as in traditional sin as in like what you see around you is what you eventually end up wanting to do right but then um how does tv impact on that because some people see you know like a perfect family so to say on tv and strive for that does tv impact your mental thinking um to be honest with you, i really don't watch too much tv as a child even as a child no, growing I didn't, up i didn't watch tv okay you have cable so I was always outside. My always aunties, outside. Yeah, so when I was born, my mom, I wouldn't live with my mom, I lived with my family. Mm -hmm. And and that family house, it was like, we lived in uh, Oak Hickory Trail in the cliff. So it was like a two-bedroom apartment, like 12 of us in there. Because she got mm. kids, and then it's us, me and my sisters in there. Then it's my auntie and her, her kids, and mm -hmm. we all in there. It's a lot of kids in there. So we just, she was the candy house lady, so everybody come to the house, and we all outside playing. So that we, was just fun to right, you as That a was kid. just fun to me. So right. my uncles and them, they putting us in boxing clothes. We outside fighting in boxing gloves, playing mm -hmm. throwback tackle, like. We ain't in the house watching TV. That was a, a must. Get out this house. Why y'all in this house? Stop all that running in and out. We outside from in the morning to at night time. We ain't coming in. So why didn't you live with your mom? Uh, She was in jail at the time. Okay. How yeah. long was she in jail for? I honestly don't remember, but when she did get out, we had moved to Nashville. So I moved to Nashville, Tennessee for like how six years. How old were you? Uh, That was like fifth grade. So I'll probably say about what, you 12 in fifth grade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, about 12 years old. So then that's when you started living with her? Yeah. Okay. Nah, you 12. You flunked a couple of times, my nigga. <laughs> I mean, I, went, I don't even know how old I was in fifth grade, but I'm just saying. Like, I hope I went to in fifth grade. I don't think I was 12. No, no you wouldn't know. But then, you know. Probably about 10. <laughs> you about 10. You know, about 10, about 10. I moved my mom in. So Nashville. did your dad play a part in your life at all? Oh, yeah. I knew who my dad was. But he uh, I visited him sometimes. He he come and stop by and see me and stuff. So oh, Okay. So, but I really didn't have a relationship with my dad like that in the beginning. But now me and my dad are like best friends. I'm, with him, I'm with him all the time. I dope. talk to him. And, um... He has played an impact on my thought process. And it kind of played into the right part. So me and my dad started getting a good relationship when I was in high school. How uh, did you bridge the, that gap? Uh, what cause happened? and effect. So what? let me tell you how it all happened. Mm -hmm. One day I got in school. I got in trouble at school. My mama couldn't come up there. So my dad, my mama put his name on an important call list. So when I got in trouble, he came up there. Mm -hmm. He came up there and janked me up around in the class. I'm like, nigga. <laughs> so I didn't know you, nigga. <laughs> but I needed that, though, because that, that, that action... Showed me a lot, you know what I'm saying, that somebody's there to care for me and, like, make sure I'm on the right track. So, after that, man, me and my pop start topping it up. He started seeing about, like, how I'm doing and what I'm trying to do when I graduate and stuff like this. So, 
we start building a relationship because my dad is like real cool. He real business like in a, in a mind frame, mm-hmm. and um, that's where I get a lot of my leadership skills from from my pops. And to me, it shows like because if your mom had came and did the same exact thing that your dad did that day, it wouldn't be the same effect. Because it's just something about a man doing, you know, trying to reprimand a son compared to a woman trying to do it. It just won't work the same way. Right. No, it won't work the same way. Mm-hmm. But I love my mama for the way she raised me, though. Cause, man, what yeah. you talking, man? Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, jail and all, nigga. Let me tell <laughs> you something. I want, my mama went to jail. She beat up. I ain't going to say her name. I don't want to mess up. My RIP to my mom. But, yeah, she had to whoop one, and she ended up going to jail. And uh, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Not and bad. when she came out, nigga, I was still strong. So I get it, bro. I mean, I can't go to the extent of what you did. But, yeah, I understand. Right. So when you, when you think about just... Uh, being going through all of that, who drew, who drove you to to put education first? Because there you had to put education first at no, some point. No, you didn't. Did you I go went, to college? I, I, yeah, I went to college. I okay. was big into education, man. I knew I graduated high school with one point nine GPA. I, was, <laughs> I didn't even know what college was, man. My father or my mom didn't even graduate high school. So, so how did you come? Who, how did you end up putting somebody how had you to come in your life? You lying. Somebody had to say something. We only know man, what you know, we learned. You know, you know, so like. Let's let's fast let's let's rewind. So in high school, like my senior year, it's like two months left before graduation. My guidance counselor was like, "You don't go to school?" I'm like, "What? I'm gonna go to the military or something." I really was just saying something to get her off my back. I really didn't. I wasn't going to the military either, but I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna go to the military." She's like, "Nah, I want you to go to this HBCU." I said, HB, "What's HBCU?" She was like, "This a black college." I'm like, "Okay, for sure, let's do it." Cause she had went there, so I was like, "So well, it was her." No, nah, my but come to find out, my auntie went to TSU too. Okay. But I didn't know that until I went home and was like, hey, I'm thinking about going to college. I'm thinking about going to Texas. She's like, oh, I went there. I'm a graduate of Texas or something. And I was like, okay, let's do it then. <laughs> that got me excited to go wow. back to school and be like, I'm going to go ahead and apply for TSU. So my guidance counselor helped me access the application, and my auntie did the rest of the work. She uh, made sure I got my transcript over there, made sure I went to orientation. My mama drove me down to orientation, and I went one time, and then my pops, my pops drove me the next time for orientation then. That's when I was sold on TSU. That's the only school I applied for. They was they was proud of you. No, for sure. Had to be. For sure. Because of all the stuff that they went through to see you still pressing on like that. I Facts. see that you graduated when they didn't. Facts. That's no, dope, that's big. man. That's big, yeah. Like like that that's the part where I tell you God got an ultimate plan for us. Facts. Bro. And I'm I'm glad to have him because I was able to inspire my pops. My pops getting his college degree now. My mom getting her college degree now. So. Uh, Dope. It's all about the inspiration. Are any of, any of your other siblings doing the same? Uh, one of my siblings on my dad's side graduated college. Uh, she graduated UNT. Uh, and my sisters, they didn't go to college. Mm-hmm. They graduated high school, though. Okay, that's good. Yeah. It's just dope to see to see how things can evolve. Mm-hmm. You can't never put somebody in a, in a closed space and act like things can't change. Thanks. That's the part I love about the God I serve. You know what Thanks. I mean? Like he, he, you, you, you just keep going through phases. And a lot of people talk about the Bible a lot, and I get it. But And I know y'all think the white man wrote it. I urge it. But at the end of the day, when you start looking at all the stories and how they transpire in there, you start to see these waves in life where you see David as he was a kid and he was taking care of the sheep. And then you see him uh, as he's uh, pretty much anointed king. And he, then you see him beat Goliath. And then you just see all these transformation. Then you go into the all the different stages of life that he, you know what I mean, went right. through. So you read about these things, and then you start to look at your life, and then you be like, man, I can see how he went there. Right. That, 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 you just brushing up, right. you know what I mean? So right. I like the evolution of how life transcends, you know, as you keep going. What do you think? I, I definitely agree with you. <laughs> it's, People, it's dope. Yeah, different opportunities open from different different aspects of your life. So you close one chapter, go to the next. That's and right. that chapter might open another opportunity, and that opportunity might open another opportunity. So it's, it's different real. phases and different struggles and different sacrifices you got to make in each chapter in order to be successful. So yes. it comes that main goal. So what was the um, the height of you going to college and then what was the low of you being at college? Uh, going to college, moving out of Dallas really was like uh, a shock to me because I never lived without like my parents or my family. Right. I was always with them. So going out to college, man, it was a it was new. So me going there... Uh, I knew I had to get my mind right for one and start making the right decisions. But I never had that right guidance as far as where to make the right decisions. Is. What so, to do, where to right. go. Mm-hmm. So when I got there, um, I met a lot of good people. I met a lot of good friends. But I met one guy, which is now one of my business partners. His name is Malik. 
I met him because I ran for Mr. Freshman. He was in SJ, something called Student Government Association. So I ran for Mr. Freshman. I won. And I was flashy. Come from Dallas. You know, everybody in Dallas, they wearing grills, chains, diamonds. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Chains, diamonds, grills. So mm -hmm. he was like, nah, you got to tone that down, man. You, mm -hmm. you, you're a young college student now. It's time to, time to change your appearance mm -hmm. and how people look at you. So he's like, I'm going to give you a suit. He took me to get my first suit, so that was all she wrote. Like I, I got in the suit, I was like, oh yeah, this is me. This feel like me right here. And then I got to see like the response. The response, people, the how people yeah. treat you right. when you're in a suit right. compared to when you're not. How right. they look at you from any race. Right, any race. I was going doing stuff that the people wasn't doing because mm -hmm. I had a suit on just because they. What looked was the first different. thing you did when you um, got a suit on? Took a picture. <laughs> got <laughs> That's on real. Got on That's Instagram. Real. Showing my suit, I like, yo, you see it, <laughs> you see it, but. Didn't even know how to put the suit on. I didn't even know the, the, did the bottom button. Did you know how to button. tie a tie? I didn't. <laughs> I, I had a bow tie on. Oh, my prom, okay. I had my prom bow tie on. So I was like, he was like, no, nah, you're going to take that off. We're going to teach you how to tie a tie. Tie a tie. Like, you got to have cuff links. You got to know how to put the pocket square in the pocket. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know how to do all that. I just had a suit on. Now I look back, I'm like, man, I ain't even had a, the right stuff on with the suit. Like, I just got a do suit. Do you remember what brand was the first brand you bought? It was KG suit. Oh, okay. That's still yeah. good. Yeah, we, 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 ain't no, I, don't, I don't trip on suits. I oh, put it okay. on. If it look good, hey, I'll put it on. Exactly. No matter what the brand is, I'm going to wear it. See, you have some people who are really like into suits that was like, oh, I don't wear nothing but this because it, the, just the tailor shape of the suit is like no other. Right. So when Them you get custom it, suits. That's when, that's when you get into like the suit game, you know, it's custom yes. and it's, it's general. You know so what I mean? that's your height. Of um, being in college, so what would you say? Because everybody has a low time, something that really just like put you whether in depression or something that gave you a stumbling block. What was that time for you in college? Um, when they disqualified my, disqualified me from running for SJ president, that was my junior year, man. I really had put my heart into it. Like from freshman year, I already knew I wanted to be SJ president when I became a junior. Mm -hmm. So it Come beco closer. it become that time to where now it's like. It's time for you to run. I didn't mm -hmm. put the work in. I didn't put the leg work in. The students messing with me. The stu everybody liked me on the campus. I got a good atmosphere around me. And it come that time, and politics coming to part. So they disqualified me my junior year, but I won my senior year, so I wasn't tripping. But I feel like my junior year, that was the right time. I had the energy. Like, I was mm -hmm. like, I'm here. Like, this is my plan. That's what I'm about to do. But it wasn't God's plan. It's what I wanted, but that's what God How did. did you deal with that disqualification? I know you said you were angry, but what did you do? I ran for another position. Okay. And so I you didn't let it stop you? No, never. Okay. Ain't nothing stopping. Ain't nothing stopping this motion. This motion oh, got to keep really? going. I said I said in the cabinet, it was another president that I was originally supposed to run against before they disqualified me. I said on his cabinet and still worked. Mm. That's what it take, mm. man. It take always putting in that extra effort, going so, the extra mile. The one who don't, if you don't go the extra mile, you're not going to get nothing. I could have easily said, man, I'm going to go chill. I'm going to go do something else on campus. But no, nah, I want it. If you want something, you're going to keep going no matter what's in the way. When did you discover your passion for what you're doing today? As far as the clothes? Mm -hmm. I wanted to get into it, but I want to get into the name and all that good stuff. So I agree. Yeah. Um, but when did you find that passion, though? Yeah. Well, Entrepreneurship? Mm -hmm. I've always been a good money nigga. Yeah. yeah I've I always yeah. been a good money nigga where right. this. In the right yeah. way or the wrong yeah. way. I, I always, I like yeah. money. A nigga in the I, streets. I like. <laughs> nigga big time dope. I like. Uh, <laughs> Oak Cliff. This nigga from Oak Cliff. Them niggas sell dope over there. No, I'm no, just kidding. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, We ain't going to say all that. <laughs> no, all that, man. man. We, I, hey, we just kidding now. You know how y'all be doing. <laughs> <laughs> we begging you for forgiveness. But no, I, I like the fact. I'm a nigga that like money too, no, so fair. I understand. So fair. I can tell you, you, you like that quality. So when yeah. did you know, like, nigga, I got to have the best of everything? When was that like, because nigga I'm looking at you you like to be clean I see your shoes nigga yeah, like you better go to space when yeah, you leave you know here what you know what <laughs> what, so what, what, when was it that that what made uh, when did you know that did, I, I had this thing for fashion you know what I mean I had this thing for fashion as a kid hey this ain't, this ain't, this is a true story so my first outfit came from my pops like the first outfit I really liked he bought me a Jordan jersey he bought me some dickies some khaki dickies and I had some all black Reeboks I wear the outfit like every day of the week. I turn the turn my drawers inside out just because like they can get washed all the time. Like you know what I'm saying? I'm making sure everything right on this fit. I'm making sure that them dick is earned every day. And I wear that fit every day, like every yeah. day of the week in the neighborhood. They That's didn't you tease see. you? No. Nah. We gonna fight. What you mean? <laughs> this 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 squad right here came from fighting. Hey, RP to my boy Trayvon, man. Trayvon, who was Trayvon? He gave you that. Yeah. We fighting we fighting in Birdie. What yeah. happened? How did how did he pass away? He got shot. Somebody in Oak Cliff? Mm hmm At a party. Wow, how Back old in high wrong school? place, wrong Back time. In high school, in high school? Yeah. and and so what? You and him was like best friends, or yeah. His whole family was talking. My family was living in the cliff. 
Wow. And so they, they, was like, they was like my neighbors. They both lived in, we all lived in on Hickory. Well, you we used to go, I used to go to his house. He used to come to my house. My sister played with his sister. His sister played with my sister. But did he, did, did he, did you, were you with him that night? Oh, no, I wasn't. Okay, that's a good thing. We went to different high schools. I had went to DeSoto. I was at DeSoto at the time. Okay. And I'm pretty sure, I don't know what school he was at in high school, but I just know he was at the wrong place at the wrong time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's the way it happened a lot of times at house parties and right. whatnot, man. And my prayers go to his family. For man. sure, man. Shout out to his family, man. Uh, hey, man, we praying for everybody who's still here who we can, uh, you know, send some great blessings up for. Thanks. But um, let's get back to the uh, clothing, man. Like, so let's talk about the brand, okay. uh, the name of the brand. Okay. How did you come up with it? Let everybody know what it is because okay. I don't want to mess it up. I will do. Right? right? What you got? So, uh, Hupe Official, it's a French word. It stands for upper class. Okay. Uh, it took us, a, me and my business partner, Kirk Johnson, he's not here, but it took us a minute to come up with the name. We all, he dresses too, I dress too. So, mm-hmm. we in the fashion. Like, our whole life, all we did was like, who going to put the best fit on? Even in college, he was at UTSA on a scholarship playing football. He like, yeah, I'm still putting that. I'm putting that on. I'm still putting that on. And I'm at TSU. I'm still putting it on. Like we, you know, we competing. So we like real brothers. We grew up together. So it was like, man, we we all this. We spend all this money on clothes. Might as well gonna start making our own stuff. And it's crazy because Hugh Bay, like, when I started making it, I was me and him was the only one wearing it. And people was like, what y'all what y'all got on? You know what I'm saying? He was like, oh, this our brand. We were just making it for us. You know, just different fashion pieces that we like to see ourselves wear. So, like, everything I put out and we put out, we wear it. You know what I'm saying? We're not going to put out anything that we would personally wear. So, so what I see now, is that how it started out? Looking just oh, like no, how? I no, see some no, lemon no, jackets no, at no. first. How, did it, how was it the first from, it pieces? From the drop. It started from the drop. It started from hats and T-shirts. Okay. We're going to Harry Hines and T-shirts. Were you pressing your own stuff? Yeah. And we, we never did press on. We what did you did do? print it. A print. I mean, not printed. We did stitch. Stitch. I'm sorry. Yeah, so, so you always got it embroidered on it, yeah. right? So you embroidered a name on there, right? Okay. So it it goes all the way back to the back to the college days. So we always knew we wanted to create a brand. When we graduated, we was like, we always been talking about it. So let's do it. So a couple months out of college, we, we found a name. We was like, he was like Hugh Pay. Like, yeah, I like that. I was like, what does it mean? He told me the he told me the name. I'm like, well, what does that mean? So he sent me the, the definition of it. it mean upper class. So I was like, yeah, we gonna we gonna rock with that. I like that. It's oh. different. So. I got a logo made. Uh, that was the first thing we bought was a logo. We had to think of a logo. That was the hardest part, coming up with a logo. So I hit up one of my good friends, Sydney Pearson. She does digital design, and uh, she designed a logo for us. We was like, that's the one. That's what we want. So we ran with it. That been our logo from the jump. When we got the logo, we started thinking, like, we can't put this logo on everything, so we need to come out with a different font. That's how we came up with the Hippo Official, stacked on top of the official, and we put that on our hats and our T-shirts to come out in the beginning. So that's what we started with, selling T-shirts and hats. And how did that? How, when did you see your peak on that? So, me and Kirk, we don't take money from the from the business. We let the money build up, and a bit that money builds up and buys the new designs that we want to create. So, with that being said, all the t-shirts and shirts we sold that build up to get us to this point to where we are now. Yeah, yeah. And so, the t-shirts are they core brands? Do they come back every year, or is it just you do different ones every time? Different ones every time. So, really, there's so, no core brand. Core, when I say core, one that comes back, you know, to where, like, like, like we've been selling clothes for years. Right. And there's always a core, like, selection. Your original, original style. One, that, that, that original Basic. one. Right. That, that's going to be the money at the end of the day, too. Right. Yeah, yeah we still one, we make sure. You can bring it back and be like, damn, this is the first one we ever done. Right. That's what I'm talking about. Well, we haven't designed, a, we haven't got a core t shirt yet because we still, we still elevating. And okay. right now, this is our core piece. That right. thing dope. Yeah, how, how long you? How long y'all been? Uh, been been had because y'all had different styles. How long y'all been? How long y'all been doing this all together? About a year now. That's dope, man. A year now. Getting to it, man. A year now. A this year. year in, really. And the people that I'm seeing yeah, wearing that's, these that's clothes, what I was bro. Say next. Like, how you putting these clothes on these dang actors, man? And yeah, what? Shout out, shout out! Shout out to the people that's around me, man. None of just done by myself. I. I, I I want to give congratulations yeah, and props stuff to stuff all the way out there, nigga. You I want to give you. props to everybody that's around me, uh, my friends, my family, because my friends and family and people that's around me on Instagram, they see what I'm doing. People respect the grind. People, res- if they see you doing something, you chasing your dreams. People want to support that. So I got people that call me like, "Hey, I got so and so coming in the city. Hey, I want you to pull up and give me some merch." I didn't ask him to do that. He personally called me, like, "Hey, I see what you're doing. I support it. Let's let's pull up and get him in some merch." And I 100 percent. Appreciate that because without him or that person, I won't be in that position to, to deliver that merch. That's it. That's it. So how good does it make you feel to see uh, different people, uh, NLE Chopper, 
uh, different uh, celebrities that I've seen holding your brand up. What does that do for you? Let me feel good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's me and my business partner. My business partner feel good as well. So I'm yeah. just not gonna take all well, the credit because he. Didn't cause come? he didn't, yeah, man. Yeah, that nigga that he at show work. Up. He at work. He at work. That nigga know he didn't come on Boss Talk. He missed a big thing. <laughs> nah, he at work, man. It's a huge <laughs> opportunity here. Nah, facts. It is. <laughs> but what I want to know, but what I want to know about that, because sometimes you can always place um, shirts or place placements on all these celebrities, but how does that impact your sales? Have you seen your sales go up since you've been placing, you know? Tremendously. Uh, they go up because of the celebrities, of course, and with the cel- who listen to the celebrities and impact that the celebrities have mm-hmm. but me and kirk we do groundwork we we on everybody instagram they say they want some merch i screenshot the dm so when we drop a new merch i personally dm or he personally dm so we constantly running like we constantly going we're not afraid to reach out to people we're not afraid to go to schools and get out on the streets and go to clubs and meet these individuals that we want to potentially want them to potentially become customers we go out and interact with the people like hey this is our brand this is what we're bringing out next we'd love for you to support how often do you come out with new designs? Um, every other month. I'm really? con- we constantly drawing up designs. It's just a matter of picking which design might come next. We always keep some stuff in the vault. Like that's 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 always gonna be there. Okay, that's good. So, but sometimes don't you think that you can? Cause like on bigger brands, they drop quarterly, not every month. Right. No, we don't drop every month. Okay. We just got new designs. But how every often month. do you come out with new designs? As in like production, giving out, giving it out for people to see it. I, I would say quarterly as well. Because, Is it quarterly? Uh, because I push. We push one item at a time. Like right now, we pushing these hoodies. Mm-hmm. It's been our best selling product that we had since we since the brand started since the brand started that's cool how, that's, ma- that's how many cool pieces brand. have you sold i can't even keep a count i can't even keep count of how many pieces we sold it, i didn't travel so many places and deliver pieces and shipped off pieces like this is not just a texas thing this is global like people in jamaica like i really don't know like i really I, we really can't tell you a, a number of well, you need to keep a database that's right showing um so when you look you always want to look at numbers right just like example when we watch shark tank and whatever the first right. thing they're asking you about is numbers right. how much did you make last month how much did you make last year how much are you projected to make next year right um a lot of times i see that and i'm like we all as business people need to know that we don't ever always do, but that's just a basis of what we should do as right. business people. And if you're not doing that, you need to get on your game to right. do it. Right. Really. You know, you, I definitely agree with you. We definitely need to uh, get in that lab and make sure we keep in yeah. track of these numbers. Because in order for you to know where you're going, you got to set that goal. Correct. This is how much I want to make next year. And not just throwing a number as like, oh, I want to make this amount. Okay, no. If I produce this amount, you calculate last year, this is how much I made. Do something that's realistic. So they're not asking them how much they want to make. How much are you projected to make according to what you made last last year? Right. And how much money you have now to be able to produce, make the you know merchandise to be able right. to make this. Right. I definitely agree with you on yeah. that on that piece. Well, you know, you really can tell him so much, but then he still stands. He got to do it himself. Yeah, he's standing in the picture with Lance Gross. He's doing his thing. You know what I'm saying? But I got it going on. You got. It's hard to talk to these young folk when they got stuff going. You know, the man is an entrepreneur. He got a lot of businesses. He really he'll listen to you. But he got his no, own. I listen. I, I listen, get it, I bro. Listen, no, I know we old nigga. You y'all in the new lane. You know what I'm that, talking that's, about? That's the best. That's the best <laughs> advice though, coming from my elders. <laughs> that's I respect it. You. Oh, I'm an elder now. Not an elder, bro. But I'm saying, like you, it's you live longer way. than me. You, you <laughs> live longer than me, so you got you didn't experience more no, things. No, than you me. right, man. Like, like, but but it's dope just the way. So, how what's the price point on those things, man? Right now, Look it's going for hundred. Right now, it's going for hundred. That's the best price. He said right now, so it can go up. And the reason, the reason, the reason, the reason, the reason I started. Off like this because I want everybody to be able to afford yeah. what we selling. It's not about the price right now. We doing that out of love. Like we doing it to see young minorities and people across the world just want to support the brand. No matter what class you in, you could be upper class, middle class, lower class. You bet you are, you able to afford this. You know what I'm saying? So who knows what the price might be in a couple months? How right many now, pieces do you get made every time? We every order? time. Mm-hmm. Like on this order, did you have to like contact them back because it started flying off the shelf and like I need another order? Right. So we our original first order of these hoodies was just thirty. We dropped we only dropped one colorway. That was like the cream and orange. That was our first original piece. That was sold. As soon as we brought it in, it was so we the order thirty was like, ooh. So how many did you order the second time? Ooh. Five hundred plus. Wow. And, and did and you that, run and that's, and that was and that's oh, some how pre-orders. many colors? That's some pre orders. So okay. at one at the first time we was only doing 
Just the uh, one color. One color. So that second time, how many colors did uh, you add to it? We did. Well, second time, we did the cream and orange. Because okay. I had released a sweater as well with it. The, the sweater, the black sweater with all the yeah. different colors mm-hmm. in. The ones you see Boosie wearing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I did that. That was another fire piece uh, that we released. So that was one of our best sellers as well. We just ain't bringing that back right now. We're going to wait. Mm-hmm. Um, but the second time we ordered, we ordered the cream and orange. That one was 500 plus because we did pre-orders. So the way we break it down, we was taking pre-orders. That's people that's already guaranteed buying a sweater before it get here. So, but when they do pre-orders and they order it, how long before the merch actually drop where they can get it? And how long before do they have to pre-order it? Uh, they just pre-order. So I, I send a DM to everybody that said they like the hoodie. Mm-hmm. And they pre-order or people will see it on my Instagram. Like, how I want to order this. I order. I take a week of order. So I do like I start on a Monday and Friday I'm going to submit the order. Okay. And then how long before they get the merchandise? Three weeks. Because it's coming from Pakistan. My manufacturer okay. in Pakistan, so it's going to take three weeks to get here. They're going to process the order, get everything on their boarding machines, and send it over. Okay. And what's your markup looking like? Who? Your markup. What that mean? <laughs> like, okay, you know how much you pay for it. You right. know how much you sell it for it. What's your markup on your product? Yeah, like, you know, is it double the price? Double so, the price, know, triple you know, the price? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, you, you don't have to tell so you can if you don't want you know it's up to you man yeah it's up to you yeah, cause about you know she, okay. she'll get you in trouble yeah, yeah, you know, I ain't yeah. gonna get you in trouble yeah. because most okay I, I, I give everybody the game but you know oh, most, oh, oh, yeah. most merch most merch is usually double some people triple but most merch is normally double yeah, so even double. like whenever you go to any stores like you know people don't ever know that but when you go to stores to buy stuff you know so you get it for a hundred bucks normally they pay fifty dollars exactly. for it no, that's true that's normally right you have some places that be like get it for the low low and then still sell it for like high, high right you yeah. know so it just depends now we ain't getting it low because this this a lot of good this quality. quality like you can feel it's the quality in it so really we taking the l because that's what we, really, we got to ship it out ship it we didn't yeah. even charge you for shipping we just shipping it out to you yeah. so it's we and not you in pay it for, for shipping for them to ship it to you right out of the money out of the hundred dollars i want right. in nigga y'all yeah. need a business partner yeah, so, I, got, I'm, right. I need some of that new right. action right i'm real we going up tomorrow we going prices today's prices not today's price. Not it's so, not today. It's not going tomorrow's, tomorrow's price. price not, not today's today price. price. Yeah. It's going up. Right, it's going if up. I'm on there. No, nah, it's going up. It's sure. gonna be probably around about three hundred dollars, dog. I ain't gonna lie to you. And we can take it there. We can take it there. From what I just see yeah. in, in what you have, and we would probably it, it, the, the core people who've been buying, yeah, we'll we'll let them win a little, <laughs> but we'll open up a store, and we would have nothing but. Is it you pay? You pay. You pay yes, you pay, and, and it, that's what we would do because at the end of the day, that thing is that thing is fire. I appreciate it, respect. and I know, and I know, because I sell clothes, and I've been selling clothes for how long? And that, how long I've been selling clothes? Uh, Sixteen years. No, longer than that. I was in the truck for a while. I even got a store. So uh, about about eighteen. Yeah. Sixteen. Yeah. Eighteen. Sixteen. Close to it. Mm-hmm. Sixteen. Seventeen. I said sixteen. You told me no. Maybe seventeen. You were close. You've been with me. You know what I'm <laughs> but but no, I know that that's, that looks great, man. I don't have to see Boosie in it. I don't have to see NL Chopper in it. No cap. None of that. I'm looking at nigga. I do clothes. Yes, I mean, and, and I like what you got on. But the only thing I think about when I look at that sweater is the fact that I can see any race wear it. It right. doesn't right. look right. like, oh, because, you know... Running a store, I hear, oh, is that black people clothes or is that <laughs> white people clothes? That's how they talk. That's right. how people talk. But I can see that's like a multicultural. Anybody can wear that. And it's I unisex. feel comfortable. It's multicultural and it's unisex. Mm-hmm. Male and female wear this jacket. It's dope. And yeah, multi. We have Caucasians wearing it as well. Right. Have you looked into? Have you looked into the cost of maybe buying your own embroidered machine and doing it yourself? Will it? Cut your cost where it wouldn't be paying that much maybe for the product rather well, than getting well, it from. Well, me and Kirk personally, we have other business businesses. ventures, so we would have to develop a whole team to get to right. that, to that point. But that's not something that we're against. Yeah, but right. he he did bring it up like, hey, we need to get a machine and start making our own product. But I'm like, hey, who got the time? Right, right, right now we don't have the time. But you can yeah. hire people, but it just depends on when you work, match out the numbers, is right. it beneficial for you to do that or stick where, where you're at? So well, we are, it's, it's better to get our own machine and do it, okay. but it saves us time by going through the manufacturer because when we first started, we was doing T-shirts and hats, but we was driving personally to Harry Hines, to the, the stitching person, back to Harry Hines to get more, to send it off to the UPS office. That was driving us crazy because we all got other stuff going on. So when we found a manufacturer to do everything, it made it more simple. It saved us more time and gas and money because they just shipped the product to the house and we just ship it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, How did you find that manufacturer? On Alibaba. Okay. Uh, Alibaba, they have many manufacturers on there. 
Okay. I mean, everybody should know that. I don't, I don't have a problem not giving out every, free game. Yeah, because not every, some people do know that, but not everybody. So it's just trying to help people out here who are trying to figure right. out how to start their own brand. And I'm all about I'm all about helping. I give out free game all the time. Many entrepreneurs hit me up daily, and I constantly I get them the same resources I got. So if they hit you up, they can they can find out information from you. Of course. Where because can they people, find people you? On Instagram at the Marcus Nash. The Marcus Nash. Yes, ma'am. And I give out free game all the time. Okay. I go to colleges, high schools. Elementary, I go talk to my granny students all the time. Like, hey, I'm pushing entrepreneurship to these elementary students at all times. Hey, live your dreams. You like sneakers? Find out how to make your own sneaker. Sell it to your peers right now. You like selling drinks? Go make a lemonade stand. I'm pushing that 100%. My nephew and nieces, they already know about entrepreneurship. That's cool. Tootie Raw, how did you get him to uh, uh, wear that in that video, you and Boosie's son? Right. How did y'all make that happen? I honestly didn't tell him to wear it in the video. That's how I know it was so dope. That's how I know the piece was so dope. It spoke for itself. He's like, I'm going to put that shit in the video. Because yeah. I honestly didn't tell Tootie Raw to put that on in the video. How did you get it to him? Well, one of my good friends, Bryce Carpenter, he's a sports agent. Um, he's real connected with Boosie. He's like, man, that shit dope. I want to get that to Boosie. I'm like, okay, bet. I'm going to give you a couple pieces. Take it down there. So I think he took it down there, and Boosie and them loved it. And Tootie seen the piece that Boosie had, and he was like, yeah, I'm going to put that on in the video. Man, he rocking it, whole team. He, he ain't playing he put no that game. Shit on. He put it that on. Nigga he put, he put, he he put it on. He dancing and everything. He having a good time in that video. He put that it though. on. He put it he on. He know that thing is sharp. Nah, it's sharp. So have you met Have you met him? Tootie? Yeah. I never met Tootie Never personally. met Tootie? Or, or Boosie either? No, I met Boosie before. You met Boosie? I met Boosie plenty of times. He came to Texas Southern a couple times. Okay, so, so um, and I see he rocking with you. How How's that conversation when you and him met up about the clothing have y'all ever talked like about no we haven't never talked to him never talked to him about it but you but he just ordered it yeah now did, he, order, did I, he remember you or you or, or or did you uh you just wanted him to have it i didn't you, want him to have a piece you wanted to make sure he got it want to make why? sure he had a piece why growing up i listened to webby and boosie all the time which one savage life or what what did you savage which life, one? All all them, one, watch, get all they wipe me down the child I, and stole from I, and don't um, want him to do the dance man we love it we love it all tell me, we, tell we grew me. up on webby and boosie we grew up on the ghetto story wait, wait, i know you in that uh i ain't gonna call it the gang that sorority <laughs> the fraternity well all that's the same to me because i'm old i get to get away with it but fraternity right okay uh and he 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 wore the shirt. I gotta ask you because you wanted the members, and I know this happened a while back. And how did y'all squash that beef? You know? I can't answer that question. <laughs> like I don't. I can't, know. I can't answer that question. I honestly don't know. You don't know. I honestly don't know how. What did you think it. when you when you when you first seen uh, it? Like, oh man. Because you, you, y'all, you know, because I got checked about it by right. a couple of people. I told you that off off air. But uh, how did you how did you uh, how did you feel when you seen him wearing that sweater and sitting on the front, right there on the front edge? And you know, he didn't go through nothing that y'all went through. How did you feel? It was a little personal. What you say? Damn. I said, damn. That's my boy too. That's my boy too. I grew up listening to. Boy. I, I like, love that nigga, man. Why that nigga do that? Why did you do that, man? What did you? What did you, let's talk about it just for a second. I know you didn't <laughs> want to talk about it because you wearing your clothes. Mm -hmm. But did you like? Damn, man. That's my boy, man. And I'm from the south. Yeah, that's what I said. Cause I knew, I knew, the, I knew the reaction was gonna get. I knew it was gonna get. <laughs> I like fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, for real, because it, it take a lot to it, it take a lot to put that shirt on. Yeah, it do. People earn it. You so, know do you saying? think he wasn't just thinking about it like that? I mean, he nobody liked the thinks way about the color. That's like me looking at you, and, and I'm looking at your end, your end process. I'm looking at the victories that you got. I don't know the work that you took to get to that point. I'm just looking at your success, and I go and put something that you got on that you work hard for. You, I'm look. You look at me like. This nigga got the audacity. Well, I'm going to be the devil's advocate, though. Y'all took the song that he, y'all didn't ask him for his song, and y'all just went to doing the But dance. I'm saying, what, no, what the song got to do with the song? That, 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 that's his song. It's like he did we put the work a lot of songs. No, we, we put, put the, the work we in We danced a lot of songs. He put the work in right. for that song. That's his song. Like, if y'all <laughs> was going to take it and just push it through a whole, uh, what do you call it, fraternity, and then even ask him, uh, don't you think that's the, kind of the same thing? No, we, we making him money. Oh no, he could say the we same make, thing. We make, we making him yeah, money. Yeah, but he could say the same thing about the shirt when he put it on. How, how? He making y'all money. He can. He is. He inspired a lot of young youth to go to college and want to become campus. That's did. right. He did do that. That's right. So I think it's it's a touchy situation. All right. <laughs> I think it's dope, but I know I know what y'all stand for as far as community and you know just helping to try to build business owners and mm -hmm. college. You know what I mean? Goards and pushing people. achievement. That's yeah, yeah, I, I love it, man. And but I don't think Boosie had no wrong intentions. Man. No, he didn't. I don't I think, think he, he had wrong yeah, intentions. Yeah, he, he wasn't yeah, disrespectful. He wasn't in his brain, it wasn't in his mindset. It wasn't him being disrespectful about it. Did y'all give him a pass on it? 
can't say all that. I can't speak on it. <laughs> I can't speak on it because I really don't, don't know. know about I don't it. know about it. But it's, uh, he ain't what no more. <laughs> <laughs> I can't speak on some situation I don't know about. Did y'all still do the dance? Oh, we still do the dance. On his music? On his music. Ah, dang, man. Y'all running things, man. I'm I'm Boosie, what's up, baby? (laughs) You know what I'm saying? You see how they talking in there. No. (laughs) (laughs) So, no, I I love to see y'all black brothers, man, accomplishing what you guys accomplishing. And then Boosie even supporting your brand, man. And not only Boosie, no cap, uh... What's up? Who all done been? I've Lance seen Gross. Lance Gross for sure. He's one of y'all brothers, right? Yeah, he is. Great okay. dude. He a great brother, man. Mm-hmm. Um, I really, I really, it really don't matter to me about the celebrities. I, I really care about the people that's wearing it every day. No, I get it. But these guys are they, they like you. They've been right. through a lot, and they, br- they brought themselves up to be on a celebrity status. Right. And that for them work. to do that. When they get paid to do that, and they just totally just do it off the strength. Off the strength. It gotta mean something else, bro. No, I do. They really speak a lot for my brand, though, and really speak a lot to me and my business partner. That makes us feel good, though, to know that like, we creating a piece out of our brain, and people actually want to wear it. Like mm-hmm. these people, we're not asking people like, "Hey, put this on, do this." People actually saying like, "Hey, that's a nice piece. That's a nice piece. I really like it." Yeah, so, that means a lot to us. Nah, man. So, uh, man, hey, man. Um, what else we want to ask you? Uh, do you listen to music? Do you? Do... Yeah, I listen to music. What do you like? I like old school music. I like soothing music. Really? Yeah. What, what, and, and did you I, like, have, I like something like Kim, you know, like James Brown. I'm you, ever in my seen car Kim, you ever seen Kim live? No, I haven't. Me and my wife went to see him live. I love that times, music, right? man. Mm-hmm. Nigga go hard. Great artist. Nigga go hard, man. I been listening to the line because it be so smooth, you know? Like, when you're talking <laughs> to the women, you want to talk smooth to them, you know what I'm saying? You got to know, know what you're doing. You got to know what the conversation like. So I definitely like listening to old school music because it give me that vibe of, like, how they used to speak to women back in the days. It's different how you speak to women now. So Yeah. Wait a minute. Uh, Let's get these shirts up here, man, because you done, you done brought us something. I see. Man, I just appreciate you, man, for coming on the show, man. What's going on, man? man? I, I bought you something. What? <laughs> Got to put you in that new play, man. What, man? Come gotta, on, man. No, man. Gotta, I'm going to cry, man. Gotta, Don't do gotta, this, gotta man. Got to put you in that new play, Don't man. Don't do this, man. Man, man yes, this man. This yours. Man. It's for you. Ooh, I'm going to wear this thing, man. This is the same it. color as you my old school, nigga. Y'all it. niggas in trouble. It's for you. Oh, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No man, problem, no problem, man, no problem. Man, y'all better understand, man. We we done got hey, we done got pimped up in there today, y'all. And it got me feeling good. I don't know what's going on. Hey, man, I you feel some type of way. Get the designer, you rocking Hupe. Hey, you rapping now? Nah, for real. Put me in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> Man, thank you so much, man. So comfortable, man. It feels so soft, man. man Almost you. like a blanket, nigga. Just, <laughs> nigga, I feel like I want to go home and go to sleep now. Nah, nigga. for real. I get sleepy in the car when I got it on. You know what I'm saying? I be yeah. sleep. I be sleep this driving. So comfortable, dog. Nah, for real. Man, nigga, I'm finna have this whole man. Thank you so much, bro. Nah, you know, for real, no like, like you give me something that I know I'm going to wear this. You thing. know, I'm going to steal that blue. Dog. No, you're not. Yes, no, you're I am. Not. Are you serious? <laughs> You can have the black and no, white. No, I'm not. This is my car color. That's all right. I'll drive the car and nah, the car. wear the shirt. I'm going to drive my car now. You yeah. ain't going to do that now. You yeah. put it on. Woo, I'm going to come through that thing, man. Woo. I'm going to send you pictures, though. Got to. You're going to be like, whoa. You got to. But I'm going to do it better than all them other niggas. Got Lance Gross, uh, NLE Chopper, Boosie. You niggas in trouble. That nigga done gave me a shirt. And watch how I do y'all with my car, though, nigga. And if you got an old school, nigga, pull up, nigga. Nah, for real. You know what I'm <laughs> Thank you so much, man, for coming on the show, man. Top three artists of all time, dead or alive. You put me on a spot like that? Yeah. I do every everybody come on here out to answer that. Top three, number one. Any genre. <laughs> dead or alive. Oh, any genre? Mm-hmm. Number no. one, I'm going. Someone I look up to, Jay-Z. Jay-Z? Right. You finna get off my panel, man. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Who number two? Say Drizzy. Okay. That's 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 a good one. That sound all come. We done heard these before. Number three. Somebody that's influenced the game, I say Future. You better have to say somebody from the South, nigga. I'm to get you up no. out of here, so, bro. Future. You know what I'm saying? No. Yeah, he made, he made an impact on the game when he no, came No, no. I, I think your, your your choices fit, man. I mean, you, your age bracket and where you at, I could understand that uh, definitely. You know what I'm saying? And Jay-Z entrepreneur and you're an entrepreneur, so mm-hmm. it fit. All right. Man, uh, any other business ventures that we forgot to talk about on here? Yeah, I have business partners uh, in the trucking industry, so I have okay. Let's talk about that. Like, I knew, uh, I knew, I knew that, but I didn't want to. I want you to bring sure. it out. For sure. Um, you want to know how I came about, or what yes, yes, about? for sure. Okay, so me and my business partners from college, uh, me and Malik, they now engaged. They just got engaged last week. Aww. Congratulations to them. Uh, Congratulations. Them, the business won't be where it be today. Wow. But I want to say, um, we have a trucking business, and we started in college. We didn't know what business 
we wanted to invest in or start, but we knew we wanted to create a business because we all entrepreneurs. So we had our money saved up, and when a pandemic came, we noticed people get laid off, jobs were closing, people weren't making any money. It's like, well, well, what's moving? We're on the highway. We see trucks. So that's something that never stops, which is transportation, and that's where we invested our money, and we said we're going to start a trucking company. That's when did that start? December. December? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Man, that's dope. And how it's been going? Great. That's good. It's going wonderful. That boy getting that money. How many like, trucks y'all have? Uh, we have three right now. That three? boy getting that money. Right. Okay. Three. Yeah. So you started off with three from the rip? Yeah, we started off with one. Oh, okay. We, 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 so we, we, how we quick been, before you bought the next one? A, a few months. So it was going that quick, that good? Yeah, it's going good. We're about working. We're going to do something. We're going to do it the, we're gonna do it the right way. We're gonna how do did it. you find the drivers? Looking. Family members. Well, to start off, I'm not going to sit here and yeah, say Yeah, because you just buy the truck. So when you buy a truck, how do you get in the game of, you know, so you go to who? So... How some does it my, work? Some of my family members have trucks. Okay. Some of my business partner family members have trucks. So mm-hmm. it's not like we jumped in a lane we didn't know about. We got people in that lane that's giving advice, telling us and guiding us the right way and which, which way we need to know mm-hmm. and, like, which things to look out for in the driver and things like this. So that's how we able to make the impact that we've made so far by the people that's around us. Mm-hmm. So Okay. Uh, no, because I was just thinking, like, because I know nothing about – trucking so if i wanted to invest my money and go buy a truck and i went and found one that's on sale or whatever a really good truck somebody's selling it and i said okay i'm gonna buy this truck how do i put my truck to use like do i contact a trucking company and say hey i got a truck i need to put it to some use or do i just get a truck driver like what steps do i take in trying to make this make me some money back right so first when you're looking at a truck you want to have somebody that buys trucks that you Mm -hmm. know so they can go with you in order to tell you what to look out on a truck that's bad on a truck. Mm-hmm. So we did that. That was the first process. Um, when we got the truck, we bought it, and then we found the driver, which is one of my business partner's fathers. Okay. And he drove for us and got us on the ground running. Okay. Uh, much respect to him as well. And from that point on, it was How did you find the company that's going to, um, so you can um, start pulling that merchandise? Oh, low boards. Okay. So you do low boards, and... On the Lowe's board, it's different, it's different Lowe's that you can mm-hmm. access and bid for and say you want to run for and you can accept it or not. Okay. I didn't know. That's what I was trying to oh, get yeah. to. That's how people find their Lowe's off Lowe's boards. Okay. Yes, ma'am. That's good. Thank you. No problem. So um, I want to go back to the clothes one more time. Uh, Hupe, I just want to talk about the pants for the ladies. Mm-hmm. Are you still doing those? The stack joggers? Yeah. Uh, right now we're currently creating a different design. Okay. Um, also, uh, it was stack job and that, that one, that shirt, that sweater that Boosie wearing, what, what, how'd y'all come up with that design? And it looks different from what you're wearing now. Right, it's a block sweater. So, yeah, uh, it's a block sweater he's talking about. That was a design I seen online. Um, uh, and I was like, man, that'd be double if we put Hipe on it. So, uh, I contacted the manufacturer. I was like, hey, I got a design in mind I want to do. I like the way the sweater concept is, but I want to put my own twist to it. And they was like, okay, let's do it. So, I drew it up and sent it to him. They was like, yeah, we can do it. I said, let's do it. <laughs> wow, dope, man. Hey, man, thank you so much, man. Um, definitely uh, appreciate you for coming on our show, uh, blessing us. Um, we ask you to, anytime you got something new coming out, make sure you get a hold of us. Also, is any stores carrying this brand right now? No stores are carrying So it. is it exclusive or could I get it in my store? Been here for 15 years. You can get it in your store. I'm, I'm black-owned business. For sure. And we'll be able to tell people that they can come over here because I love this brand. For sure. And, and I'm trying to do people brands that's uh actually you know that's that's connected to us now right trying to do things to where i can make this make sense for us we've been doing this a long time and we put a lot of money into a lot of people's pocket i want to put some money back into our people's let's do it you know what i mean Mm -hmm. let's do it so that's what i want to do for sure so if me and you can uh, set up something like that i'd appreciate it um i can't tell you we we've we've stood the test of time We've had actually uh, up to seven stores in various times, but uh, this is the one we're doing now and we're, we're, we're making waves. So I definitely want to set up something where I can have the new styles when they come out okay. and uh, rock with you, man. And anytime somebody out there say, hey, man, I need to get a sweater, you can always say, hey, man, we ain't got that one more, but check with, you know, check with uh, Unique Fashion. For sure. With Boss Talk, you know For what sure. I'm saying? We let's, can do that? Yeah, let's do it. Thank you so much, no man. No problem. That's dope, bro. Thank you for the opportunity. Oh, man, we for the kill it. We for the be, uh, I can't be a business partner, nigga, but a nigga, I can buy in a little bit, too. <laughs> nah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's, and then when it blow up, then I know I'm in. All these other stores, y'all ain't going to even get the contract. I know how it go, right, babe? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they going to be like, they can't get in. He sell it in Dallas. 
Ah, no, I'm just <laughs> thank you so much, man. No, for real, thank you, man. Thank it's you been an honor and a pleasure. We love you, brother. Man, love you too, man. Hey, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk One Hundred and One, and we out.